Hello, hello, audio check, 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 checkity check, audio check. Uh, welcome back to another video, Samuel here. Um, today I thought I would do a little spontaneous rant, or not really a rant, I want to talk about a topic and I thought maybe I would make this a regular thing, maybe I would call it thoughts in the rain or something like that. Um, I'm here in Osaka in some random park and it is raining uh, all day today. So it's not the nicest atmosphere to sit down to make this video, but I kind of like... Oh shit, <laughs> rain just got heavier. Um, I kind of like the rain. Uh, it makes me feel different. It makes me reflect and I also enjoy taking pictures in the rain. Um, so yeah, I could have done this video at home, but I thought it is better to go outside. And so yeah, this will be without any script. So this is um, just me talking and I didn't make any notes. So enjoy and let's see how this goes. Um, I will try to make this without any cuts, but that's probably not going to happen. So I want to talk about Instagram today, uh, especially for street photography or photographers in general. And I'm assuming that if you're watching this, that you are another street photographer or a photographer or someone who's interested in posting your artwork. And before I say anything negative about Instagram, uh, let me get the positive things out of the way. Um, I really enjoy Instagram uh, as a platform. It's my only social media besides uh, YouTube. And what I really like about Instagram is how you can uh, connect to your friends or like-minded people. And I really enjoy sharing my um, Insta stories and not so much regular posts, um, but we will get to that. Uh, so I like Instagram because of the community aspect. I don't like it really to present my work. And I think most of you guys will feel the same. Um, so in general, I don't have anything against people who want to make it uh, on Instagram, uh, which means, you know, posting regularly, um, doing all the hashtags, trying to get featured or reposted. And I think that's fine if that is what you're going for. I think for some people, I think Alan Schaller is a good example. I think he blew up because of Instagram. Uh, the same goes for um, Dan, uh, Daniel Ar Arnold. I think without Instagram, these people, they would, I think they would still show up somewhere. But Instagram, I think, made it easier for them to share their work. So I guess you can make it on Instagram. But um, for me, as someone who posts photography work, um, I don't really like to see my pictures that small. And I think for some people and some of my photographs included, um, they work better like on a big screen or printed. Uh, man, there are so many ways I can start this, but um, so let me go back to how this even started uh, of me doing this video. Um, so on Instagram, I, I posted, I started posting uh, photos from my trip here in Osaka, um, photos from Japan that I just took a week ago. Um, because it's the first time of me getting out again, taking street pictures and I was excited to share them. Um, I like the pictures and I use an app called Preview to preview all my posts. And <laughs> I already pre-planned like 18 posts or so. So I had everything laid out and I, all I needed to do was, you know, post every day or every other day. But after like five or six posts, I realized um, or I asked myself, like, wait, why am I doing this? I haven't even looked at all the photos yet. And I'm posting, you know, the ones that I initially liked right away. And what will this do to my photos um, once I'm back in Germany, you know? Once I'm out of my honeymoon phase, so to say. So, yeah, I started asking myself the question, why do I post these pictures? And what will it do to my pictures? And I think I'm wasting them away because it's it's a rare opportunity, I think, for all of us, but for me also to, to be in another country and having time to take pictures. So I shouldn't just waste them on Instagram because once you see the pictures, do you really want to see them again? Like in a zine or exhibition or on my website? Do you really care enough? to go out of Instagram? I don't think so, because once you see my picture, I mean, for me personally, when I see a picture on Instagram, 
and let's say someone brings out a book of pictures they, that you already seen on Instagram, then for me personally, I wouldn't necessarily buy that book other than it's, an, it's a nice project or something that has a nice story around it. But it's difficult, man. <laughs> yeah, so I was doing a story post on my IG, um, basically announcing that I will stop posting my recent pictures because maybe this is a chance for me to start a little project. And even if it's just a zine um, for myself, just for, from this trip, so that I have all the memories from this trip in, in one zine, um, I think I should do that first before I post my pictures online, uh, especially on Instagram. I still have my own personal website, um, which is still my favorite way to present my work, but it has been updated for a long time. So yeah, I announced that I will not share any photos. The problem is, because I'm also doing YouTube, uh, and I have some videos coming up where some of these pictures that I wanted to post on IG will be shown in a future video just because I have to show them because it's about going out taking pictures and these are the pictures you know that I need to show so it's a little bit of a um, dilemma here for me as someone who does YouTube <laughs> and shout out to everyone who does YouTube and photography at the same time um, that's a, a unique problem I think specific for us content creators um, but I think for someone who's just doing street photography or photography, um, you should also think about that. Like, what are you doing with your work? Do you really want people to just swipe through your photos? Like, it kind of feels like our photographs become, it's almost like becoming toilet paper, you know? I mean, last year, uh, toilet paper was a precious uh, thing, but, um, you know, we use toilet paper for a specific thing and, we don't keep like we don't have high we don't value toilet paper right as something special uh, we just use it and I feel like on Instagram especially street photography um, it is becoming so so instant I think we're giving away the value of it and I don't know I just wanted to talk about it and I know this is like a one-way stream, but um, you can post your thoughts in the comment section. It would be cool to hear your thoughts. This is my setup, by the way. This is the bike from my mother-in-law. And in Japan, they uh, have this uh, thing, this adapter, where you can put on uh, an umbrella, which is pretty convenient because I was able to put my camera here and uh, it wasn't getting wet. So, but I was a little bit. Um, yeah, that's the setup. I don't think this is a problem specific to Instagram. I think it's just part of our generation. We are so connected, everything is online, that we um, have more means to share our work. It makes me wonder if Instagram was around when, I don't know, Bresson or, I don't know, Robert Frank or whoever um, did amazing work in the past. I wonder how they would use it if they are uh, if they would have used it. Part of me thinks they would have used it, but maybe in a different way. That's why the real deal with Moriam is, is the books. Because when you go through the book, mm. then the images become that stronger narrative, right? Because he tried to have an Instagram and the publisher took it down, right? Oh, interesting, so. yeah. I don't know. Um, but I feel like by posting my work on Instagram, I'm making myself kind of relevant, you know, I'm still doing it. So, hey guys, here, look at my photos. I'm still doing it. This is proof of me going out taking pictures. But at the same time, I don't think anyone really cares to see my work after that. Uh, this is just my feeling. I haven't, you know, I haven't uh, finished my photo book yet. Um, but I think it's more important to think about projects and that's a problem I think that many people who get into street photography have. You can, there's so much you can do. Street photography basically has no real rules. You know, just take candid photography. I mean, even that is debatable for some people. Um, you can do street portraits, right? 
but there are so many things you can do types of street photography and so many things you can photograph um, that I think you get lazy and don't think long term and um, let me tell you a little quick story here uh, I originally wanted to make a book of my best street photography work from 2019 to 2000 no 2017 to 2019 and I think I have some decent pictures one of my some of my favorite street photographs that I ever took are uh, have been taken during that time but when I was putting together that book um, it felt r weirdly random and I couldn't really find a theme and it felt a little It wasn't focused, you know what I mean? It was just random street photography and it didn't feel right, so I, uh, after all, didn't make the book. Uh, and I decided to do something with my 2020 uh, pictures, which I think have more of a story. Um, so yeah, I think we should think about that when we do street pictures. And it's really hard because today, for example, I thought, oh, I could go out and take pictures and collect photos for my Japan zine and then maybe I should focus on something specific that you can only find in the rain but uh, I still stop and take pictures of some you know interesting looking wall or signs or um, you know things that aren't really related to what I was originally going for so yeah I think it's hard to so maybe we should train our eyes to see uh, more long term it is kind of like having too many options in terms of gear, right? If you bring three lenses, um, you will probably use all of them, but will never get a great shot because you're too distracted changing lenses. Um, so going out with just one lens, one camera is a huge help. But then on top of that, maybe we should think about what am I actually doing? I think one thing that is a huge benefit is if you capture one place only then you know someday after taking pictures in your hometown you up you have probably enough pictures to make a book out of your hometown and that is what a lot of street photographers do um, you know you know all these people who shoot in New York they do a photo book about New York and I kind of envy them or, th or wish I would love my city enough to capture photos in my city um, but because I'm always uh, moving and uh, going to Japan and being in Germany and sometimes other places in Europe I feel like I'm more of a tourist street photographer um, it's it's fun though but I think I should capture one place um, and I'm trying at the moment to love my hometown enough to take pictures regularly but it's really hard because honestly I don't really love my hometown enough so, but that it could be one thing that you could focus on. Um, for me, during this trip, I decided I'm just going to make a zine out of springtime in Osaka or Kansai, the region, because I'm also going to Kyoto. See, I'm, all, I'm always making it more difficult and complex than it needs to be. Um, but, I'm but I'm going to make this just about this trip and it's just going to be called springtime something and it will be ki kind of random. It will be just street photography. But at least I have made a zine about this time period in this place. And it will, be, it will be interesting for me personally. It might be interesting to you as well. And I think I'm going to treat um, at least the street photography I do more like chapters. So I can put an end to the project, you know, or the, an end to a series of pictures. So yeah, I just wanted to share this. I know I'm rambling and the watch time on this video will be horrible, but uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, and let me know in the comment section what you think about Instagram. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Are there any alternatives? Because one thing I didn't mention is um, what's great about Instagram is that if people stop you on the street and they ask you, what are you doing? You can say, you know, I'm a photographer and they're like, oh, give me your Instagram so that they can check out your work. Um, <laughs> I think when you say to someone, yo, just check out my Flickr account, they don't really, they aren't going to do it, let's be honest. Um, so it's great that Instagram is accessible to everyone, so it opens up, you know, your work um, to more eyes, more different eyes, not only 
your friends, your colleagues, um, which I think is very important. Otherwise, we will always stay in our circle, um, which is also a thing on YouTube, you know. People who watch this video are mostly photographers, probably. I like Instagram for that. Because my, my wife is on Instagram, my, my brothers are on Instagram, although my brothers also take pictures. But yeah, I think we still need another platform. Because I want to see the photos big and maybe less random photos. Hmm. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. And that's it for me here from this random park. And I think it stopped raining. Definitely got less. Um, so yeah, see you later in another video someday. And maybe I do this again when it's raining again uh, on, a, on a different topic. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.